Thanks for listening to the Velocity Church Podcast. We hope that this message encourages you, inspires you, and challenges you to take your next step with Jesus. Now here's the message. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 through 3 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run, let us, say that church, run with endurance the race that is set, the race that is set before us, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, for consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls or discouraged in your minds. Uh, turn to your neighbor, a couple of neighbors there, and tell them, don't give up. Don't quit. Keep on running. Keep on moving. You know, back in the 70s when I was a kid, I'm telling my, on my age right here, I used to wear a shirt to elementary school that said, keep on trucking. <laughs> Had a picture of this guy's big old foot. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Keep on trucking. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We call on the spirit of truth. We thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit teaches us all things and gives us remembrance of all things. I thank you for your word, Lord. It's sharp quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It can divide the spirit of a man and the, and the spirit of a man, the soul of a man, the spirit of a man. We thank you, Lord, that the natural things in the mind and, and, the, uh, and the natural man, Lord, it, it can transform. That word can transform by the renewing of our mind with the word of God. We thank you, Lord, it's not just words in a, a mere book. This is not just historical text, but this is living word of God. God breathed, God inspired. And Father, we thank you, Lord. It's our atlas, it's our map, it's what causes us to prosper. Lord, we thank you. We look into your word. We want to hear from your word this morning and change us. Change us and transform us. Give us revelation. Open up the curtains. Open up the veil so we can see the wonderful things of your word. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. Let's milk this scripture. We're going to go through Hebrews chapter 12, these three, and we're going to preach this whole thing right here. So let's milk it here this morning. Therefore, <laughs> remember last week Bob was preaching? He says, therefore, you need to know what therefore is there for. Remember that? And yeah, what you do is therefore is saying, it's saying here we're in Hebrews chapter 12 in the very first verse. It's saying, go back, get the context of what's taking place. Therefore, before, Hebrews chapter 11 was talking about the heroes of faith. The heroes of faith. You remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the patriarchs. And then you had matriarchs, you know, you had Ruth and you had Esther. And you had named all these heroes of faith. Uh, Moses. And, 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 and the different ones, Joshua, and how the walls of Jericho came down with, by uh, Joshua being in the lead. And, and how he had all these things, Gideon, and just so many more that talks about the heroes of faith. And I want you to see these heroes of faith were not just extraordinary people. They were ordinary people. But how many know that God can take ordinary people and do extraordinary things? Amen. Amen. God can take imperfect people, people who had problems, they had problems, they had issues, they had hurdles, they had struggles, they had setbacks, but God used them because of their faith. They believed in God, and that's what faith is. Faith is the substance that things hope for. How many know the old devil's after your hope? Because the hope is about your future. And so if you can't get your future, you can't imagine your future then faith doesn't have any way to bring substance to your future if you lost your hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. You start off with hope. Hope is the address. But if you don't have hope, faith doesn't know where to bring the substance to. Right? It's like we plan on building a building here, here in the future, which, good news, things are turning our way, praise God. Y'all be praying about the city and everything. But we know God's in control. But we're looking forward to that day. But there's going to come a time when materials are going to go out there to that address on Lounge Road. 
Lounge Road is like the hope, right? It's the address. But then the trucks start coming in from McCoy's. The truck starts coming in from the different places, and the contractors start coming in and build what we hope for. Amen? That's what, that's what faith does for your hope. So the enemy is after your hope. And these, these people of the old, in the past, these heroes of saints, they were extraordinary because they believed God. That's all they did was believe God, even when it didn't line up with the reality what God promised them for. Has, has God ever made you a promise, and you read the promises, which are, by the way, yes and amen, and you look at it, and it doesn't line, line up with your reality? Huh? How many of you know what I'm talking about? You're going through some struggles. You're going through some things, but you can't let go. And here's what he says. Therefore, we are also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Everybody say great. Big old cloud. Large cloud of witnesses. God has winners in heaven. They're winners because they finished the race. They're looking down the banisters over the balconies of the heavenlies, and they are cheering us on. Amen. The saints of old, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the apostle Paul, Peter, cheering us on. But not just the saints of old, but just a few generations back. Just generations back. I mean, just a few generations back, praying grandmothers. Amen. Praying mothers, godly fathers, godly grandpas, uncles or aunts are cheering us on. How many of you know it's a lot easier to do something and run a race when you got someone cheering you on? You know, back, we're going to be celebrating 39 years this September. And we first got married, our first week of buying groceries was at Fiesta. And uh, over off of uh, Tidwell in 45 and me and Dana went in there, and we thought we broke the bank. $55. Well, whoo, $55 back then. Got you a lot of bags of groceries compared to today. And so when we get home, we were driving the little Plymouth Horizon, the little hatchback, opened up the back, and I grabbed a few bags. And I just, you know, like, you know what, I'm going to just grab them all. And, I, you know, I did like, and Dana looked at me. We are just first married, right? She goes, ooh, you're so strong. And let me tell you what that encouragement did for me. I still today, today, I'll go get all those groceries, and it's a lot easier because $55 just gets you one like this, right? <laughs> but when I spend $300 at the grocery store, I'm still going, oh, okay. Watch this, Dana. Because you, you, you know, bounce one on my head, and I come in that house. Because you, you perform better when someone's encouraging and cheering you on. You need to see that there are saints of old, saints that are generations that are maybe you not even met, relatives you might not even met, that are cheering you on and saying you can make it. And they made it because they finished the race. It's not how fast, it's not the tortoise and the hare. It's not how fast you will run the race. As long as you finish the race that's set before you. And so they finished the race. Do you realize that they finished the race? Those saints that went before you were far less than what you have today. Me and Dana took a trip a couple of years ago back to uh, South Carolina, Charleston. The reason we did, all her great granddaddies. Well, I'm telling you what, we went back and saw some graves, and they're, you know, this is like number six, number seven, you know, ten generations back, and she had one named Isaac. Dubos came from France, and so he they were being persecuted, and so they fled from France and landed over in South Carolina, started the Huguenot Church, and um, my point is this is that they came by ship without GPS. It wasn't the ten. Let me check the ten weather day weather forecast. All right, it wasn't none of that. They they came with far less than what we have today, and they finished the race. Amen? They were lining up stars and probably the moon and the weather. And a bad day for them would be a storm. A bad day for us nowadays is like if the Internet goes out. <laughs> we become so, I can't make it. I can't live without air conditioning. You know, we had... You know, we had that storm, and it knocked out our power there for a week and a half. And, you know, we were blessed that we could stay with some folks. But 
I got to thinking, my dad back in his generation, when he was first a boy, it was attic fans what they had. We had an attic fan. I remember you turned on the, you opened up the doors and your windows and you turned on the attic fan. That thing just like sucked everything. Door starts shut, slamming. Wham! You know? And that's what we had. That's what they had. And so what I'm saying here this morning, you got so much more than they had, yet they finished the race. And we got so many people today are thrown in the towel and quitting and giving up. Remember, you got a great cloud of witnesses. And those are ones who, those are winners that God has put in the clouds. And, they're, and they see us. And so it says, let us. Everybody say, let us. Oh, boy, here's where it gets quiet. Because the responsibility comes now on us. Let us lay aside every weight. Every weight. That means there's more than one weight we can have in life. How many know there's some weights in life that can weigh you down? How many know it would be wonderful to run a race like 100 meters, right? But the race that we're running is like a big old marathon. Life is like running a marathon. And I would like to run a race where I just had my little lane and I know where the finish line is, is this 100 meters? But how many of you know life can throw you a four-seamer <laughs> high inside, right? How many of you know that life itself can throw you some curveballs and throws, throws things at you? And how many you know you got an enemy? You have an adversary, right, who still kills and destroys. It says, be sober. Know that your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking who he may destroy so, you know, that's not going to let you just run your race smoothly. He's going to throw some things at you, too. So we got to run this race in life called life. We're going to have to learn to get rid of weights, things that inhibit us. God's got a purpose. God's got a plan. He says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans of a future of hope, not evil. So he knows the plans he has for you. So we want to fulfill those plans. We want to fulfill God's will. To do that, we're going to have to get rid of some weights, some of the weights in life. What are some weights in life? It could be procrastination. Oh, it's going to get quiet in here, Lord. Here's one, a big one for me. Maybe self-reliance. Ooh, back in my 20s, I was like, hmm. Get it done, right? I was young and dumb, right? Had more strength than I knew. Now that I've gotten a little more mature in my age, I know to work smarter, not harder, right? And to work smarter is call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. And you know, God will let you run like, uh -huh, I'm it. To let you know that, hey, your dependency is going to come upon him. Because there's going to come a point where you're doing this right here. And it's not going to work. And you're going to get tired. And you're going to get frustrated. And you're going to throw your hands up. And God's like, yeah, see? Just come to me now. Now, now come to me. So, so run to God. So we got to throw off weights. How many know that weights sometimes can be, oh, here's one. I'm meddling now. Hobbies. Recreation. Barbecuing on Sunday mornings. You know you can barbecue on Sunday afternoon, right? <laughs> you know you can burn your beans at noon, right? Oh, you're meddling now. Oh, here's one. How about a weight can be people? Oh, cricket, 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 cricket. People can, you need to realize that sometimes there's some Jonas in your life that you need to throw off the ship. Because if you don't have boundaries, they become a weight. Why? It says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Not just talking about marriage. That's not just a marriage counseling scripture. That's saying in life, you're going to have people that try to influence you that, that are secular thinking, thoughts, ideologies, and, and, and they will influence you and cause you to be weighted down because they don't speak faith-filled words. They speak empty words. Am I preaching here this morning? 
Sometimes we got to let people, doesn't mean we don't love them. Doesn't mean we don't, not nice to them. We just got to have a little boundary here, right here. Right? And some of you would feel, oh, I'm stressed. I'm tired. You quit doing that if you just set some boundaries. Back when I was first preaching, I'm going to go down a little rabbit hole. I used to get people saying, Pastor, I need to come see you. And I was like, okay, come on. And to some people, that meant all day long. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, they showed up at 9 in the morning, and they're leaving at 4 in the afternoon. And I was just like, Lord. And he goes, it's your fault. <laughs> and I go, why? He says, you need to set some boundaries. So you know what I started doing? People say, hey, I need to come over. And I say, okay, I got an hour. See, that's some wisdom there. Otherwise, you know, it's not that we don't love people, but but sometimes in life we gotta we gotta set some boundaries. And sometimes people can be awake. And so don't don't, you know, you're you're wondering why you're thinking thoughts, it's because you've been listening to thoughts that are not faith filled words of God. Jesus didn't even bring all his disciples with him when he went places sometimes. He he took the three. Peter, James, and John, right? But he didn't take everybody because, you know, not everybody could be that close in a circle. We need, to, we need to examine our circle. Maybe we're not fulfilling God's, the race we got going, simply because we got some weights. Now, here's one. Okay. I preached this to the 9 o'clock service, and, well, they were glad when I got through with it. <laughs> It says, let's run with endurance. It says, let's lay aside every weight and the sin. Now, notice first it says every weight. That lets you know there's more than one weight. But then it says, in the sin. It doesn't say sins. It says the sin. It doesn't, it's not plural. It's singular. In the sin that easily ensnares you. What sin are you holding on to that you're not letting go that's become a weight? What sin, what temptation tempts you and you don't let go of it? We're not here to hold on to sin. Some of us, you know, Bub last week took one bag and that's what we do. We're like, we'll lay everything aside, but there's one sin. Can I tell you something? Jesus didn't come and was beaten and wounded and bloodied and beaten with a cat of nine tails on his back and wounded for our transgressions, and hung on a cross, to die on a cross, for us to become a Christian and hold on to a sin. He didn't do that. We shouldn't. We got to let go. That, that sin that trips us up, that we don't want to let go. Well, Pastor Arthur, I'm saved. Well, I'm glad you are, but what are you saved from? Oh, heaven's my home. Well, I know. Heaven's your home. But what about right here on earth? What are you being saved from? Because there ought to be a difference in your life. When you become a new creation in Christ Jesus, the old man goes away and the new man comes. Where's the transformation? From faith to faith, glory to glory, we ought to be changing. There ought to be a transformation. There ought to be fruit of the Spirit. You get people sometimes they go and they're like, oh, I've been slain in the Spirit. Well, great. But how about walking in the Spirit? <laughs> Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness. That's a fruit of the Spirit of being a new creation in Christ Jesus. You ever see people make excuses for their sin? Have you ever seen other people make excuses for other people's sin? <laughs> Can I put it that way? Oh, that's just their personality. No, they're just critical. No, that's just the way they are. They just tell it like it is. No. Kindness is a fruit of the Spirit. There ought to be a change. Listen, if if there's not a change, hear, hear me closely. If there's not a change, you might just be religious and not have relationship. There's a lot of folks that come to church that just are religious, but there's no transformation. Relationship is what brings you. You have to be born into the kingdom of God. 
And the only way you're born into the kingdom of God is not by knowledge. It's not by, oh, I, I know God like a theologian. I'm the Bible answer man. Just answer me. Ask, ask me anything. It's by relationship with Jesus Christ. Because Jesus says, in that day, there will be people who say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not read you and teach you like a report? He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Because they had no relationship. There ought to be a transformation. Now, the fruit that comes along, it might be immature, but there ought to be some fruit starting. Right? There ought to be a makeover. You know, remember, <laughs> you get a, women, a, a woman who does a makeover. I watch those things on TV sometimes. And, and they're like, here's her before, and here's her after. But we got Christians that are saying they're, they follow the Prince of Peace, but they're meaner than a two-headed snake. <laughs> there's no transformation. There's no, there's, there's, they say they know Christ. They know the Prince of Peace. But there's the same, same old person they were before. Show me where you lay aside the old man and put on the new man. Amen. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, that's enough of that right there. Well, ouch, Brother Arthur. My toes are hurting. So we got to let go of that sin, all right? We agree with that? Say amen. And let us, here's another one, let us run with endurance the race that's set before us. You have a race. My race is not your race. His race is not your race. You have your own race. We can't get jealous and say, oh, you run the race that's set before you with endurance. How do you run a race? Endurance, patience, that's the fruit of the Spirit. James says it like this, count it all joy when you fall into test. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, endurance. But let patience have its perfect work so that you may be perfect and tired and wanting nothing. You know, God will let you go through some things to take you to the gym. You go through some tests. No pain, no gain. You ever heard of that back before? And so you got some hurdles. You got some struggles because if you didn't, you wouldn't depend upon God. You'd become your own God. But when you have some struggles, when your fat gets in the fire, you go, hey, Lord. And then you realize he's your source. Run the race with patience, endurance. The race is set before you. You have to lay aside the weight and the sin to do that. You, I, us have to lay aside those weights. God's not going to bulldoze you over and say, do this. You have to do it. And you lay it aside. And let me tell you, when you lay it aside, don't come here on Sunday mornings and go, drop it right there. On my way out, pick it back up. Some people will pick up that baggage before they even hit the lobby. How do I know? I hear it in their talk. Lay it aside means put it far away from you. Put away malice. Put away anger. Put away bitterness. Put away jealousy. Put away envy. You do that. We have to do that. How do we do that, Pastor Arthur? It says right here, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. How do we do it? You got to keep your eyes on Jesus. You got to fix your eyes on Jesus. When a runner races, you ever watch those guys that run those, you watch the Olympics, you watch those 100 meters? I always watch 100 meters. I'm like, man, these guys are like greyhounds. You know what I'm talking about? He's running 100 meters. And you watch them when they run. Their head is so perfectly still. I, I can't even walk like that. I'm, much less run like that, right? Well, those guys will run 
and their head is like, it's like it's on a platter. It's just like floating. Because they are fixated on the prize. They're looking at the finish line because if you do this, you get distracted. Looking out to Jesus. Back when I was high school, I played ball. I played some baseball. I said this story, but this is a new bunch. I'm going to tell it again, all right? <laughs> and, and in high school, I went to Aldine High School, a big 5A school. And we had this guy, this boy, every time he got on first base, we were in the dugout, we bet that he'd get thrown out. If, if, the, if the coach gave the steel sign, and this is everybody's steel sign back in the day, touch your hat, rub down your slide, your arm. Steel zone, right? He's going to get thrown out. And one, because he got a good lead. He got a great lead. And it wasn't because he didn't get a jump off the pitcher. He would. But every time this coach told him and told him to quit doing this, Every time he'd get right to second base, he looked to see where the catcher had the ball. And it was just enough to slow him up and get him thrown out. What are you looking off at? See, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Don't get fixated on your problem or the hurdle or the distraction or the struggle. And that's what we'll do. We'll park it in life sometimes right there. And don't get fixated on the past. The past is history. Don't sit there in a rearview mirror of life. And he's like, you're not going to run a race like that. Forget the past is history. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one that started it. He's the author. He's the author of our faith. He's the one that got you in salvation anyway. And he's going to finish it, right? He who began a good work in you, he's going to bring it to completion if you keep your eyes on him and don't throw in the towel. How did Jesus do it? Let's look. He's the author and finisher. He's the perfecter of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat at the right hand of the Father. The joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. How did he endure the cross? You know, the cross, that Friday, when he was in the garden, the Bible says that he... He, he, he was, sweat droplets of blood was coming out of his forehead. He was so stressed about going to the cross because he knew what the cross was going to bring. And that was on a Friday. And you remember he says, Lord, if at all possible, remove this cup from me. And he says, but nevertheless, not my will to be done, but thy will be done. Some of you feel like you got, you, 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 you got a cup in life that, that you're stressed about and tired. Learn from Jesus because he didn't fixate on Friday. He says he thought about the joy set before him. He thought about Sunday. He's going to be resurrected. He's going to sit once again at the right hand of the Father. All authority to him. Conquer sin, grave, and death. He did that. Look unto Jesus. Look what he endured. Consider him. He didn't think about Friday. He thought about Sunday. And if the joy that's set before him is that he would be the first fruit of many. And those of you who have given your lives to Jesus Christ, you're part of that. You're part of that first fruit. Praise be to God. Despising the shame. He took, do you realize what Jesus did for us? He took the penalty of sin and removed it from us. When he was on that cross and he said, Lord, Lord, why does thou forsake me? It's not because he was seeing Jesus. He was seeing us on that cross. It was our sin. Because he who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. So he carried and he bore our sin. He was sinless, but he carried it for us. He endured that cross. Because if any time he said, I could call ten legions of angels, it's all over for mankind. But he knew he had to hang on that cross. He became the sacrifice. He paid for you, my sin debt, all of us. That's a wonderful thing. That's such a champion. A hero. 
He's our example. Looking unto him. Keep your eyes on the prize. Because you have, remember, saints that went before you. People that you don't even know, relatives of you that you have never met, that are cheering you on from the banisters of heaven. Saying, keep on going. Don't quit. Don't give up. Why? Because they will tell you at the end of that race to hear the words, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Now enter the joy of the Lord. It's worth all of it. So the things we're going through here right now is temporal. And how many of you know you're believing God for some promises that they are yes and amen for today on this earth? It's not just a sweet by and by, but right here on this earth. I want to give you one last scripture. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And there it is again, us. And let us, let us not grow weary while doing good. Don't grow weary doing good. Don't throw in the towel. Don't quit. The race you got going, depend upon Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Why do we not need to grow weary doing good? For in due season, there's a season. What you've been believing about, there's a season. The promises are God, there's a season. And God is faithful. What we need, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, is endurance. For after we've done the will of God, we receive the promise. We just got to do the will of God. We just got to keep believing. You just got to be like those saints of old. You just keep believing. Abraham, it was credited him for righteousness simply because he believed. Who has believed our report this morning? Who believes in the strong arm of the Lord? Thanks for listening today. To stay connected, visit us online at velocityburnham.org and follow us on Instagram. And if you're ever in the Burnham area, we'd love to have you visit us on a weekend. Thanks again, and we hope to see you soon.